that again? John? John? Yeah. <laughs> it hurts. We're doing it live. Oh, great. Hey, hang on. You had one job, Puppet Chris. One job. There. Is that better? Yep. Okay, <laughs> now that I've completely ruined this live broadcast, I'm going to continue. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you're watching another live edition of the Locker Dome Daily Report, or TLDR for short. Your daily dose of geek news, product views, and answers that you can use. I can answer the question, uh, is real Chris coming back? Yes, because his hand hurts. It's up my butt right now. I'm going to, next. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go downstairs now. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Puppet Chris. I'm going to come Ooh, upstairs yeah. now. I'm coming upstairs. <laughs> uh, do not say that we do not keep things fresh and interesting and better lit here in these <clears throat> live broadcasts. This is the Locker Gnome Daily Report, a serious look at today's geek news and, and reviews and answers that you can use, like an answer to the question, am I going to do that again? Not today. Not today. Because <laughs> Public Chris, he's, uh, <laughs> he's seen better days, quite honestly. This is live on the internet, and I just wrapped up one of those Q&As with you and me and answering the question there uh, about CES, what I think about CES. And really kind of diving deeper into why I didn't necessarily go. And uh, I'll leave it to you to watch that video when you have a chance. Patrons got to see it live. They can watch it uh, all week, really, without any ads. Everybody else will get it a week from today. So I'm not holding anything back. There's all Perillo. You just get more Perillo when you become one of those supernomies, a.k.a. a patron for your active support. I do have quite a list of links. You have to pardon uh, I've got a light headache, just so you know, because one of the reasons we're in this room, well, actually, there's a few reasons. Uh, as we talked about yesterday, I am currently in the process of trying to uh, do a better job for you in terms of producing video that looks better than it's looked. Now, I like my desk. I like my setup, but there are times that I want things to look better and look different, and uh, you know, setting up elsewhere in the house doesn't always do the trick, so we're basically reusing this room, which was a secondary office, uh, for a production studio, building a production studio. Right now, what you see is not what it's going to be like forever. I didn't even want to do this. I mean, I do. I want to do this. Don't get me wrong. I'm just the kind of person that gets frustrated the more knobs and wheels and, and, and switches and, and things that I have to toggle because there's more that can go wrong. So I tend to do things easily, like press a button and go. That's my kind of uh, live stream. That's my kind of video. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to make that possible. But that said, uh, it is going to take a little bit of complexity. I'm going to need to be getting uh, soft boxes, four of them, uh, two in the front to light me this way. I've got an overhead light for my hair, which, can you see it reflecting, John? The answer is no, because no. it's just pitch. This is a black hole right here. It just sucks in all light. It's a, My head's a vacuum, <laughs> like that. And then two lights back there pointing, uh, pointing to the back, which right now it's just the wall. I had an old Epson projector, which wasn't all that old, really, uh, except HDMI input. That's relatively new, and uh, John's playing around on his computer, you know, flipping back over there. And so we're just kind of cobbling things together, seeing how it works. This is not how it's going to look uh, forever. Some people would say that it's better. It looks better. It certainly looks different than it has before. Better than yesterday. You know, yeah, I would, I would say that, yes, it was better than yesterday, but there's something to be said about kind of working through the process of blue light, like what's reflected in my hands, and because that's from the screen below. That annoys John. John does not like blue light. He also doesn't like blue milk. I've discovered. Not really a fan of the Tatooine milk. Uh, so that's what you're seeing here. That's why it's uh, different. And it will likely uh, continue to, to, uh, to be different as uh, this particular part uh, of the home evolves. A, a full-on production studio will, where uh, I'll be able to shoot higher quality. I mean, in terms of production rather than just always at my desk, always in my workshop, which I think there's a time and place for that. But when I do brick builds, to do them here, uh, live streams that I can't do in my office as easily, like when I have guests, uh, to be able to bring them in side by side uh, and accommodate them in, in some way, shape, or form, it'll be easier to do here in this room than it would any other part of the house. So I officially am putting together a production studio, which will not be a pain in the ass to manage. You want to know where all your patronage goes to? Uh, equipment is likely where it's going uh, as I continue to evolve that part of things. So things are absolutely coming together. Thank you for your support. Uh, in the list of news, uh, Xbox and Wii sales are finally catching up to the PS4. And uh, this is a big deal for an old person like me. Yep. 
because I, you know, like the Atari 2600. Still haven't figured out how we're going to stream that kind of stuff easily. I, you know, what I think I can do is is basically play the game here and then just have it beamed up over there, you know, behind me. It's it, kind of cheesy that yeah. John doesn't like that idea. Okay. We'll figure it out. You can't rush perfection. Oh, I'm on a slow climb. Still not there yet. It's elusive. Uh, I did think about getting an Xbox or a PS4, if only for the Twitch integration, just because it's easier, it's cleaner, it's simple. Uh, I am more of a, a retro gamer, classic games. Uh, I like picking up a joystick, putting it down, uh, picking up a controller, putting it down, moving on with life and not getting too stressed out. Uh, I tend not to get into first-person shooters or uh, you know extensive puzzle games. Uh, I, uh, I'm a different kind of gamer. And I think the gamer as a term uh, is a, it's a broad term. It's not just one type of person. If you enjoy games and that's a part of your identity, then I think you're a gamer. I'm not a gamer. It's not a part of my identity. But I do like playing video games, especially the classics. So, anyway, I do plan on playing more games. So the, the idea is that I'd be able to come down here, figure out something in here for a setup where it's down here away from my workshop where I might be getting a lot of productivity stuff done. Sorry, I keep turning to John who's just over there. Um... You know, this this is what this room is going to be for. So expect more retro games. It's quiet down here, too. It, uh, it, it is very yeah, quiet, cool. and it's cool. Well, we do have the window open. I don't know if that's really being picked oh, up by this particular mic. Like oh, yeah. The projector is just, it's very, very warm. Uh, it was, uh, yesterday, it was some kind of bird day. Today is bean day. I celebrated by eating some of Diana's beans and chorizo, or as they say in Espanol, beans e chorizo. Because the window's open? Is uh, no, I'm not. I'm no, it's staying inside. Everything's staying inside my head right now. Well, not that. That's not. I did. They went past my head. I don't have. My head don't fart. Not Your anymore. Head don't fart. <laughs> it does not. Your head don't it fart. Used to. Your hips don't lie. Well, they do. Actually, my hips do lie. I don't know if you knew that. Especially in the mornings, my hips lie. A lot of things in the mornings. Uh, if you were looking to troubleshoot or analyze your Wi-Fi network, we have an 87 percent discount. For NetSpot Pro, it's this neat little utility. How much of a discount, Chris? Eighty-seven percent. Eighty-seven percent. Does your well, that's insane. <laughs> no, you are. Do you, have you ever had problems with the your hotspot? Uh, I sound like a commercial all of a sudden. All have the you time, ever had Chris. problems with your hotspot? Not sure if your internet's not working. It's just the worst. Well, the How problem can is. How we make it better, Christopher? Well, you're gonna have to figure it out on your own, John. Oh. Tell you what, you keep talking to me like that. I'm not, I'm not, not going to help you. Like oh. 87% discount. I will help you with an 87% discount. Where can we find that discount? Uh, I can't even. <laughs> Deals.lockernome.com. <laughs> Sorry, John. <did> I... <laughs> well, I thought I was going to have to catch him. And then I'd be responsible for you not being able to see uh, I can't see either way. I'm an old man. I'm turning older as, it, as the days progress. I don't know if you knew this. Yeah. Time marches on. So, uh, yeah, deals.lockernome.com. The, the nice thing about this tool is that you, you turn it on. Deals. Well, not, it's not just that you save money. It's the fact that it will help you better figure out where the signal is uh, well best optimized uh, and where you might position your base station as well as your repeaters if you have them. So it's a good tool to help you troubleshoot network issues and potentially get a better signal. And uh, sometimes just having more information can make all the difference in the world. I've used a, a, other, a series of tools, but this is one of the better ones that I have used even before the discount. Uh, it's something that is worth looking into. Indiegogo has launched uh, In Demand, which is a feature that allows pre-orders to continue after crowdfunding ends. Which is interesting. Um, I I would have appreciated that for the uh, Plastic Galaxy movie. I didn't realize that was even going to be a movie until after it was uh, done, and I wish I could have uh, pre-ordered one, uh, even though it hadn't necessarily been produced. I am still very leery about a lot of crowdfunding projects that uh, are in relation to technology, hardware, and software. Uh, the average pitch that I might get in email that I usually just delete is in relation to uh, someone who's hired somebody else to let me know about a product that is currently on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, and I'm just not a fan of that. I, I, I'll wait, and I always tell them, I'm like, I'll wait until something ships and I have something that I can hold on to and look at. Unless you have something like a functional prototype I might be able to look at and might be interesting. Uh, until then, I just don't want to spend a lot of time and attention focusing on stuff that hasn't shipped yet. 
and isn't necessarily ready to uh, to ship. And I've shared my thoughts on that before, but I think this is a something that'll be uh, quite handy when I find out about a project that I would have wanted to back, likely a media project, like a movie or uh, some kind of a uh, piece of content, uh, to be able to pre-order that. Uh, so it's very nice to see Indiegogo doing something like that. Speaking of classics, this is also something that I might be uh, trying here with the retro gaming thing. I don't. I, I still have to figure out the formula, though. I got to figure out how I'm going to get it done, in a way that it's it's fun. Because sometimes doing video production isn't fun. It's not fun for me. It's fun for a lot of people. I I do not. I, it's not fun for me. Indiegogo is the thing that I just told you about a second ago, and now I'm going to move on to the thing that I was going to tell you about. <laughs> Internet Archive now lets you play nearly. 2,400 MS-DOS video games for free in your web browser. Now, John, you weren't even born. You were born into Windows, weren't you? Yeah. You never played in DOS. You never played on the no. command line. See, I played DOS games, a lot of DOS games. I think one of my favorite DOS games would have been, and it, of, of course, it's evolved across uh, many platforms, Mahjong. There was a certain version of Mahjong that played in DOS. Uh, you know, I didn't really get into Doom. The first-person shooter thing just wasn't my thing. Uh, I like puzzle games, Mahjong. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, the other type of DOS games that I, way back when, I, I remember playing a lot on the Commodore 64. The one I really, really would love to play again in the classic mode, Balderdash. Boulder, Boulder Dash, not Balderdash. Uh, that was a lot of fun. In fact, they released an iOS version of Boulder Dash recently, and they, they gave me like a redeem code for it, and I said, this is just, this is nothing like the original. It was like in-app purchases and points, it was confusing. And the original Boulder Dash that I played on the Commodore 64 wasn't easy uh, to figure out because it didn't really have an instruction booklet, or at least ours didn't come with an instruction booklet. But um, it, it was fun once you, once you cracked that nut. Uh, I remember uh, one of my favorite video game companies in the C64 days, and I think probably you know may have been around in the early days of DOS, uh, Epyx, E-P-Y-X, loved what they did. Uh, Jumpman Jr. was one of my favorite games as a kid, and there's actually uh, someone who's uh, picked up that ball, and I guess, I guess he's got the rights to uh, with the, for the intellectual property. Uh, Jumpman Forever is what he's gone with. I've looked at the graphics. They're a little too modern for me. I mean, I want to play classics. I mean, pixelated, you know, 8-bitty, 4-bitty, because I, I like that classic. That, 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 that was fun for me. I, I like that. I like pixelated stuff. When it's time for pixelization. I wouldn't want to pixelate this video, though. Just so everybody knows. So, if you enjoyed playing MS-DOS games, uh, one of your favorite DOS games may very well be there, playable within your web browser. Nearly 2,400 video games from DOS on the Internet Archive. Uh, a lot of HomeKit-compatible uh, items, including switches, devices, sensors, home automation stuff, is uh, being unveiled at CES. This is not a surprise. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, I did talk a bit about CES, why I'm there, uh, why I'm not there, uh, or why I'm not, why I've gone, obviously why I'm not there this year. The, uh, the idea, though, of seeing an array of wearables and home automation technologies, it's, it's interesting, yes, uh, but I'm still waiting to see who the leader is going to be. And I've actually gone to the point, I've, I've gone as far as, uh, you know, to uh, Epsonize my life. We did it live and it <laughs> failed. I, it didn't fail. It worked really well, John. I was just kind of, we were just messing around there. Ah. So John's going to, I can do shadow puppets now. Uh, over here. Yeah, I'm doing it over here. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that anymore. It's my ostrich shadow puppet. Was it? Like that. The, uh, uh. The idea of smart homes and uh, automation and wearables and all these personal technologies that uh, should make your life better and easier, theoretically make your life better and easier, but a lot of them just aren't fully baked. That's been my experience with a lot of smart home stuff, just not ready. And I've found, in my experience, that security with a lot of the smart home stuff seems to be not even an afterthought. Like, it's not a thought at all. It's one of the reasons I'm not running any kind of baby monitor at home, because uh, they all suck. I've talked about that before as well. I don't want to beat a dead horse. I don't have my topic stick to, like, smack people over the head with. Uh, I realize, is my hand hot? My hand is really hot. You're all hot. I mean, like, And I've hot. been, like, crying inside, but I don't want to walk over. You know, screw it. Just a second, folks. We're doing it live. <laughs>
this is you know what? I, the best part, I'm, I don't know how this looks. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna make no that looks worse. That looks way Does worse, it look dude. Worse? Yeah, it looks way worse. Oh god. Told you, John. Uh, podcast listeners. I we're adjusting the light. This this is what happens when Chris Perillo doesn't have a thousand patrons. This this is uh, the best he can get. I it's it looks just the same, John. You just totally A B'd me in a doctor's know what office. To do. Better one, better two. Better A, better B. C or four. Four or D. D or E. <laughs> a. Uh, you know, I'm fascinated with smart home stuff and the wearable stuff. I really am. But, uh, I know a lot of people who have wearables and they just stop wearing them. Do you plan on getting an Apple Watch? Huh. No. Oh. Wow. I was even thinking about it. I was, until you said no. What, I changed Chris Perlow's mind? Yeah, you just got me thinking. You're right, John. You're right. No. I don't know. Uh, but that's the problem. With a lot of these technologies, they're 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 pushed out the door, they're not fleshed all, all the way through, and, or fleshed out all the way, and uh, you know the users have to deal with the variety of shortcomings that come with uh, those products that they might bring into their home, and so I'm inclined to bring fewer and fewer things into the house. Uh, certainly, put them on uh, an internet connection because any one of those things could be a point of failure that I may not have uh, you know readily or be able to readily address. So I'm very very interested in what Apple's doing with HomeKit. I'd be interested in, in seeing, you know, how Google's ecosystem evolves around Nest, and uh, would they also acquire uh, Dropcam? Uh, just one vendor, but knowing that the vendor I happen to go through is just going to provide an experience that's going to be a solid experience, it's not going to make things worse. Uh, and that's where I kind of have to step back and uh, attenuate my excitement uh, for a new product. So I, I, I'm interested in, in seeing yet another wearable. Uh, there may be, you know, certain wearables that are radically different, but as far as I've seen, you know, a lot of them are, are, are solid. They're designed differently. They might have a different platform, uh, but ultimately the usability is what's going to matter, and you're only going to understand usability after you've had a chance to uh, use a product. And that's, you know, whether we're talking about a wearable or a smart home device, anything, really. Uh, you, you can read a review, but a review only says so much. I think it really speaks volumes when you have an opportunity to use something yourself, and uh, I, I see... The wearables category is still very, very, very fresh, very new. Uh, I still see the uh, the home uh, or smart home automation technologies being very, 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 very fresh, very new, and I'm just not as as willing to um, to m take certain risks anymore as as much as I used to be. It's it's fun to play with technology when it really truly does work, but there's too much technology that just doesn't work, and and the, when the market's flooded with a whole bunch of not just you know uh, third parties, but third-rate products and services, uh, why, why would you do that? Why would you invite yet another headache into your home? I did invite a headache into my home today, though. I didn't realize it, but uh, I think the paint fumes have gotten to me. That, I, that does not explain how bad I've been today, but it does explain why I kind of had a, a headache. I hurt my lower back, too, moving some furniture around. Uh, I moved um, that thing. Good. They can see it, of course. Yeah, but it's I'm, it, just ima in your head. Imagine you see something that on one side is blue and the other side is glowing white hot. Can you imagine that, John? No. Really? What are you talking about? I don't know. Could it be my hands, maybe? Yeah, Patron. You know, it's it's the screen. What is it, Chris? I don't know. It's the one thing here. Uh, so, 3D printing. We always talk about that when Jerry's around. He's threatened to bring over some kind of 3D printer thing that there's a new version for. Uh, I'm interested in a 3D printer, possibly, if only to mess around uh, with stuff. This room may very well house a 3D printer. This will be the production slash 3D printer room. Uh, when it, it gets to the point where I am ready to 3D print things en masse, and I, I just don't think I'm ready to 3D print a lot of things. If I did, they'd be kind of gimmicky. Uh, I would love to be able to uh, take some of the designs that we're building for geeky creatures, 3D model them, and press a button to have them printed out. That'd be kind of neat. Uh, but I'm still waiting for uh, 3D printing technology to uh, catch up. There's a company that uh, Jerry and the rest of the 3D printing community is not thrilled about or with, MakerBot. They announced new filaments that enable 3D printing in materials uh, that mimic limestone, mimic, mind you, metal and wood, available late 2015. Uh, the resolution gets higher, these uh, products get easier to use, faster, 
uh, you know, Jerry can speak way, way more deeply than I could on the state of the industry. But it is something that is just yet begun to uh, fascinate me. Even if you didn't like what MakerBot has done over time, moving from open source in an open community to something a bit more proprietary, uh, they are one of the leaders in the industry. And, uh, you know, competition brings uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of better products uh, to everybody out there. Metrics based on a single number are a poor proxy for value for internet companies. Evan Williams, uh, you know, you might know Evan, uh, he had co-created Blogger, co-created Twitter. Well, he, his company hired the guy or had the guy aboard, uh, Jack, who uh, uh, created Twitter uh, while uh, Evan and his company were pursuing podcasting as a business model with Odeo. Uh, when you see one number on a page or you see one number from a site, that is not indicative of anything apart from that number. That number without further context means nothing. So when I look at a video's view count, I might be impressed. Wow, it's got a lot of views. Well, how many subscribers does the channel have? Oh, the channel's got two subscribers, but a lot of views. Hmm. Oh, it's got a lot of views, but how many, how many people liked that video? When you look at one number and you interpolate, uh, you fill in the blanks, you could be filling in a lot of incorrect blanks. And uh, that is a bigger challenge that I think uh, a lot of people have to address. And this is something that I think people are prone to do. I've seen people do it before. They see one number and then they just assume everything else. They say, well, your view counts changed. Your subscriber counts this. You're, I'm like, that's just one number. If you're not comparing that number against other numbers, it's not fair. And sometimes things can't be boiled down to a number. I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'd rather have a thousand people who genuinely care about what I do than a hundred thousand people who could take it or leave it. Eh, it's, it's just, eh, it's nothing. Uh, I want to develop deeper relationships with people out there. It's always going to be that way. Uh, granted, I would rather have a hundred thousand people who uh, genuinely cared about what I did on a regular basis than, you know, anything less than that. I, I'm not going to argue that, but what I'm saying is that sometimes the, the number that you see is not the only valid number to, uh, to be basing any kind of judgment upon, especially when it comes to uh, internet companies. Anybody who's doing anything on the internet. Uh, I've long believed that it, it's not a, a proper measure for influence. It's certainly not a proper measure for intelligence. Uh, you know, I know I've done some videos that I just loved. I thought they worked really well. John was uh, happy in producing a CPU episode. Where we, What were we talking about? We were talking about uh, Top Tech Toys. Yep. That was that one. He said, best one ever. And people saw it, but it's not indicative of the quality of the video because not a lot more people saw it. So you can't, you can't just automatically draw conclusions based on one number or even a couple numbers. A lot you know, might go into producing a video that's worth seeing. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, it, it's a horrible video or it was done wrong if fewer people uh, see it compared to other videos that more people may have seen. Uh, John mentioned this to me today. I didn't read the news uh, or any kind of story, but Facebook has apparently launched channels for businesses. Somewhat. Yeah, well, you can opt into it, or at some point you'll be able to opt into it. The idea is that Facebook's evolving to be not necessarily for content producers, not necessarily for people like John and myself, but more like businesses. So if a business is on Facebook and it's, let's say, selling a product uh, and uh, it's not making money on advertising... I think that's what Facebook channels are going to be for because if you think about that, Facebook's never paid a content creator or anything. That's not what Facebook does. They take content creators' money. They don't pay anything out. So it's not a YouTube replacement for everybody, certainly not for content creators. But if the videos you produce are tied in specifically to a product, that is something that's going to be very valuable for you. So instead of having to launch on Facebook uh, you know, video for your page, you'd be able to, or I'm sorry, instead of launching on YouTube for video, you'd be able to use Facebook. And, and uh, I think it's a smart way for Facebook to evolve. But again, their approach is going to be different. This is not a replacement for YouTube. It's not a replacement for content creators. This is just, I'm shooting from the hip here. I haven't had a chance to use it from, from my understanding of what it is, my understanding of Facebook's business model and Facebook's history. I don't think it's going to do any good for uh, people like uh, myself and or John or people who create content. Might run ads. Uh, might run other things, but it would be interesting. You know, it would be interesting. Go on. Here's, <laughs> yeah, shall I go on? So, dear Mark, is that... that's closed. <laughs> you know, weird thing. It's you right weren't, you weren't even, light. you weren't in my light though. Uh, that was the like thing. Here. 
Is it better? No. You did brush the mic. Okay, that that's... <laughs> okay, here, here's my... No, there's proof. That How, what's here. that girl? She goes, what's the meme like? Uh, you know what I'm... You know the girl uh, I'm talking about? Talking Everybody about tagged John like... That will not be a meme. Well, the girl. Uh, the girl. The buck tooth girl. Send us your best memes, okay. people. Not, she's not really buck tooth. She's like... Chloe. Is that her name? The little girl? Yeah, she's like... Chloe, yeah. Looking like... The WTF girl, I think is what she is. Right, dude. WTF girl. Anyway, I just WTF'd you for sticking out your tongue here. That was weird. Uh, so here's my idea. Facebook, what they could do is launch communities. They got groups. They got channels, etc. And do kind of like what Patreon does, uh, where I could set up a private group. And let's say, you know, anybody could join or whatever. But let's say, John, uh, we had a group and it was a dollar a month. And you can join the group and you can upload videos and you can do private things. You can do things that Facebook controlled it. And Facebook handled the payments and Facebook handled the management of everything. I'd, st I'd totally set up a group on Facebook if, if Facebook managed cool. all that. Think about that. Would that not be amazing? Because Facebook's making money. They'd be enabling not just content creators but communities to actually exist on Facebook. That would give creators another option. So exactly. A lot of services is up to the creators to provide the value, but the creator would be giving the value and the, there would also be the value of communities. Too. Well, so see, and, and that's the thing. is like I would just assume, it's one of the reasons I use Patreon. I just assume go through somebody else's construct and have to manage it on my own. And I'm willing to lose, you know, honestly, 50 cents on the dollar if it means that I don't have to manage, if I don't have to uh, break my neck to do the things that other people can do well. I'd rather not go that far, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think that Facebook could very well have a model there. That's not what they're pursuing today, but I think it'd be very, 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 very smart to do. Like, like creating like affinity clubs on Facebook. You know, like you know, join you know, this group, and you know, these and are all the things that you get promises. Facebook account, it wouldn't require like an extra account. Nope. A bunch of emails. They're handling payments, micro payments. It's like a, it'd be like a game of hope, sorts. I hope uh, Zuckerberg's listening. Uh, I doubt he could be a rich man. He but right but now. he's they're not doing that well, now. He's not rich yet. Yeah, richer than God. But I don't know. I've never talked uh, to God before. I, I do not know. I do no not, one's, know do not quote me on that. I'm not saying. I'm not even <laughs> saying God exists. Is richer than God, Chris Perillo. Uh, I will soon be smoten, smitten. No, what? smote. I smote. Well, I smite thee. You use I'm, words I'm I never know, so I can't help you. You're on your own. Smote? I feel that, John. I feel that way. That is a metaphor. Smote? I've never even heard that word before. So I, I will smite you. I will smote, smite you. Yeah, but smote. That's what I'm saying. What's oh, the past of smoke? What's yeah, the smite? smite? Okay, what's the past of smite? Yeah. What's the past? What's the past of smite? What's the past? I did Google it. <laughs> Give me the past tense of spite. Smite. Sp spite. That's what I said. I, that's exactly smite. what I said. Smotted. This headache's really smite. kind of throwing me off. What? No, that's not what I said. What? Uh. It is smote. Yeah, so I said smote. I said that, didn't I? Oh, wow, you kind of suck. For knowing you smote. You go to college for English or something, you loser. Oh but, right. But he now has been smitten. That's the. I have been smitten. I'm not smiting him. So I feel smitten after you smote me. By uh, uh, patron Earl Green, people sent this around. There's a, I guess a fire pit kind of thing, that's shaped like the Death Star. People love sending Star Wars stuff around. Uh, a grandfather who made this Death Does Star for. Smoke well, yeah. If you put fire in it. He's apparently selling these on Etsy. You can get oh. your own. It's like thousands of dollars because it's expensive. Uh, well, I mean, it's thousands of dollars because it's expensive. Yeah, that's, that's why. why. It's thousands of dollars. <laughs> you know, it's the artisanship. Because it's the work. You know, the metallurgy. Uh, so anyway, he's selling. A, if you wanted the Death Star fire pit and you were afraid to build your own Death Star fire pit, you can get your own on Etsy thanks to this grandfather who made the uh, original Death Star fire pit for his granddaughter. Thank you, patron Earl Green. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start winding down. I think that started to happen the like moment I, you know, started with the whole puppetry. With the, imagine the... Yeah. the oh. Wait, the Chris Perillo puppet and you are the same person? Is that <laughs> no. what you're saying? No, I went downstairs and I came back upstairs. You kind of just gave that away. Oh. You're in the basement. How can you I am in the basement. Downstairs. Here, can I be more blue? It's the blue man group. I don't care. I'm doing, I'm doing this to upset John. <laughs> He's shedding a man tear right now. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for your support. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try a hangout here. I don't know how much uh, I'm going to be able to talk you about there. Can't but... get off the air until I get up and hit the button. Really? So I physically can't get up and off. Yeah, that's who I'm looking for. Who tweeted that? I, I did. I oh, just made it. thank you, Liz. Liz just made this. this is exactly. Hang I on. Chloe. 
too too call. too bright too too bright. Your phone's too bright. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, John. See that? See the Side girl? Side eyed Chloe. Yeah, pretty much. Side eyed Chloe. Pretty much the same thing. No, it's yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> I look horrible in that shot, but Liz did well. <laughs> That's more like a flirty. Hi, podcast. It's more like if anyone does that to me. I'm sorry. I'm doing a horrible audio job with these uh these broadcasts. Yeah, these last two, couple days have been horrible. Yeah. Hey, that's not what people how much, John, how much money is it to listen to those podcasts free? They should get their money back, Chris. I'm sorry. Actually, the comments have been fantastic. Of that's what? because we're awesome. For what? What comments? They said I love these podcasts. No, the I last to go yesterday's watch the video. or today's Oh. Month. So, they love them. So, in if you're watching this Thank you for the like and the share and everything. And we're sorry. And if you're in, well, that too. That's a given. If you're like, watching, they, we're sorry. It's like the geometry. That's a given, John. That's a given. The uh, uh, But if you're listening to the podcast, right now, all of us are naked on camera. So you have to come watch the video to see... Uh, I'll do it. The, I'll do it. Don't you do it, Chris. I'm going to do it live. Do it. I'm going to do it. No. I don't need to see this. I'm going to do it. Close your eyes, kids. I'm doing it. <laughs> Uh, you can edit that out, can't you? Nope. Oh. Uh, okay, so we'll hang out. I don't know how long I can stay because I do have a, a very, very light headache. Is, do you want me to it's turn like the lights? Diet <laughs> you know, it might very well be the light. I've had to deal with blue and, and yellow light today. Blue and yellow. Blue what, and what I need is notes. That was a Chris Verilla joke and I feel bad. You know, I've never actually heard Black and Yellow, the what? song. Never. I've heard the chorus. I'm too times. old. John, it. I'm trying to read. The text is space, and I still have to do this and still can't see. Maybe it's because of your lightheaded. In my day, we used to install drivers. We used to love it. We had a file called config.sys. Mm -hmm. And we told our brothers they couldn't edit because they were not our sis. Oh. Another one you should feel bad. Pull it back in. Reel that one back in. And we had an exec dot bat file as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that was a problem. Because mm -hmm. I told my dad to edit the auto exec dot bat file. And, of course, what he knew, he picked up the... He was, he was old at that time. He picked up the bat and did that. And I'm like, no, oh. don't do that. You're hurting uh, my joke bone. Okay, hang on, hang on. Joke bone over there. I don't want to see your joke bone, uh, by the way. <laughs> I do not. I don't even. I don't even want to imagine your joke bone. <laughs> so. <laughs> hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Sweet potato. Cat. What is her fascination with sweet potatoes over here? They're gross. They are. Just, they belong on the floor. Yeah. So I'll retweet that if you tweet it. I love how like the past minute we've just been talking about inside jokes that no one gets. We made inside uh, jokes for the... Uh, well, we haven't even been here okay. that long. Okay, wait, where was I going with that? Oh, can you Chris tell me Perillo, what... I don't know where you were going. Okay, well, if you would stop interrupting... Yeah, I'm sorry, okay. So, dot B-A-T, what was that short for? Uh, bad... Oh, B-A-T! What, B-A-T? Badass times, like we're having right now. No. Autoexec dot B-A-T. What was a B-A-T file? Auto, auto, no, badass no, times. Binary. No, no, no. Nope. I don't know. Nope. What was it? Oh, John, you're killing me. Oh, you're kidding. That's it. Blue light. Blue light special right here. Look at that. Look at that, John. You think you're funny. Look at that. It's I know I'm funny. Hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm kicking it up a notch. You're getting some white light, folks. All right. You evil, evil man. What is it? Oh, you Googled. She Googled. I Googled. Of course I don't I know did. if there's, I don't know if there's any I'm difference. I'm human but... being. Actually, that, that kind of looks better, John. I, I kind of like that. It's. Cassie loves the sweet oh, potatoes. They're delicious. Oh, wow. That looks so bad. Why are you strobing me? I'm strobing. That's what I door. said. Why, why are you strobing me? Stop it. Stop it. John. Oh, stop, stop it. Stop it. Stop it right. Stop it. Now the podcast people... Okay. You are podcast okay. people. Like, they're they're mole people. The podcast people. Like, we are coming out to look. You know, I, don't, I, just eyes. See, I just see them like getting ready to relax. They're but you laying can't down see there them. by the night and their face is just horrified, like, what am I listening Why to? did I tune into this? Why am I doing just this? Just imagine us running around this very slightly empty room, shirtless. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's that's what you've got. With lip balm. And this is what happens when we don't have a thousand patrons. I'm just I'm gonna tell you right now. That's we should make things as bad as we can until we get a thousand. I'm not going to go that far. I'm going to do as much as I possibly we've can the, we've do. Left, we've left the workshop. 
We made that step. We emptied the room. Well, we're, we we're going back step. to the workshop, though. I know some people are going to want... I mean, that's going to happen. We just have yeah. been waiting for the paint people to... Paint people, podcast people. They're uh, like mole people. Like, hey, oh, hey. Yeah, Chris I'm not coming out again. Room coming to a theater near you in like 2000. Theater? No. No. Yep. There's going to be no theaterizing. We're going to open up seats here. People get to sit and watch live. Uh, we but don't I have the room. Audience, like, we do not themselves. have the room. Why you got to do that? Why you got to do that? John, why like, you got to... strangers. What? I of course it was. Don't be ridiculous, John. All right. So now that I've made John look younger than he actually probably no he isn't. He's fourteen years old. Dreams came close come enough. You can reach your goals. I'm living proof. Beefcake. Beefcake. Did you even get that one? I, I don't. Know. John, oh, you're killing me. Oh man. Uh. It's just not worth it anymore. We have to go. Okay, thank you, everybody. I uh, stopped the stream a while. I love you. Did you really? You're so good. Okay, we should. We should, we should end this because this, this is so really fun. bad. What are the and comments like right, right now? This is the problem. This is how you know it's my last day when I just ruin everything. Well, somebody actually said that. You they ruined everything. To us and said I ruin everything. They're talking about sweet potatoes. It was a joke, but it's kind of How do you, you don't I know ruined, if it was a like, joke? I'm ruining this right now. Well, the problem is I don't usually have an audience. I can't play off of anybody. I'm just playing with myself. What are the comments like right now, Liz? Do they They're say... talking about sweet potatoes. Uh, but why are... But I, we're, this like, is we're trying so hard this to is why, right now. This is why... This is why... You think I take twice. my shirt off in, in front of Chris for I love fun? you. I appreciate you. But at this point, I'm going to leave... Oh, wait. We got it. We're doing the hangout. Wait, I got It'll a button. At this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. Hold it. <laughs> Hold it.